Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This video nearly didn't get made. I am going to be really honest with you, this week has kicked my butt. It has been really busy, life, work, everything. I had no video, it's actually Saturday morning now. This video goes live tomorrow. So uh, this is coming live and direct for you. So this is my March favourites. I'm so excited. I've got some really good bits this month. And it's been one of those months where I haven't bought much new stuff, but these are just things that are tried and true that I've just thought, how could I live without these things? So guys, without further ado, let's get into the video. This video is very last minute. Please don't look at my nails. <laughs> they are in horrific shape. I need to paint them. I don't know when that's gonna happen. Oh, life, right? So, um, first item, let's do makeup first. It's always a good place to start. This, I know it's been in a favorites before. I know I've talked about it loads, but I, I can't be without it. It is my Hourglass blush in at night. I'm wearing it right now. If I have B-roll of any of these things, I will insert them right now. So this blush, on the Hourglass website, it's called Brick Red. As you can see, I, I wouldn't go that far. I don't think I don't think it's a brick red, but it is one of those blushes that kind of just turns to any colour. So as you know, when you put on like, I don't know, pink eye, you need a pink blush. If you put on a bronzy eye, you need a more kind of bronzy ready blush. This blush kind of does everything. It's one of those that if I had to get rid of all the blushes in my collection, or if they all disappeared and I had to start from scratch, this is the one that I would buy. As you can see, I've clearly hit pan on this, but I do have a backup. I bought a backup because um, I, it was limited edition. I don't know if it still is. I don't think so, because it's still it's still around. But if anybody at Hourglass is watching, A, send me stuff. B, please never discontinue it. It's the best blush anybody has ever made, ever. Legit. It's the, it's the best thing I've ever put on my face. And it just works with everything. And the eye palette I have got on is up next. Whenever I have this eye palette on in videos, without fail, people ask me what it is. Let me come in a bit closer and show you what I have on. This is the Pat McGrath Shock Horror Midnight Sun Palette. This palette is... <laughs> I'm not quite going to say it. It's my top three for sure. Probably my second favourite of all time, Pat McGrath palettes. As you can see by the colour story, it's insanely versatile. This colour, I, I don't know why this is here, but I have used it and I do enjoy it when I wear a blue jumper. But on my eyes today, I've got this in the crease, in the, like, sorry, in the, as a transition shade. I have this in the crease in the outer corner and then I have this little number on the actual eyelid. It's such a simple look, literally takes me five minutes to do my own makeup. It looks like you've gone to so much more effort. On days where it's a bit colder and I fancy a warmer look, I put this as a transition, this is always the transition, this in the inner corner and then that on the lid. Oh, and then just if you want a matte look, you can put this and then that, and then this as like just a matte look. This palette does everything. And I just, I genuinely love it. I've used all the shades. The bronzy one is really nice. Again, one and done shade. If you're having a lazy day and you just can't be bothered, one and done. This palette, if you're gonna get any Pat McGrath palettes, I would start with this one. It is probably the most neutral. And Honestly, I, I couldn't be without it. I'm so glad that I bought it. I have used it non-stop all month. You know me, you know, every week I wash my brushes, I change up my palettes. That is the one I've never taken out. I have just like added another palette in there, like the Natasha Dern Retro palette, not used it once. All month I've consistently gone back to these colors. It's just easy. This month, I tell you, my work has been so busy. In the mornings, I haven't really had time to do like a full eye makeup look. So this is my kind of go-to. It makes you like you've put in loads of effort when you actually haven't, and I'm all for it. This I've had in my collection for years, not this particular one. I've always bought more, 
and I don't think I've ever talked about it, but recently I've just had, you know, you have those brain waves. We're like, oh my God, I could use this for that. And this is the Bobbi Brown Stick Foundation. Uh, I think it's just called Stick Foundation. Natural Skin Foundation Stick. Yeah, says what it does in the box. This is in the shade Natural, which is a N052, which is like neutral 52, I guess. And that's the colour. And that's my skin kind of right now. Probably work again when I'm a little bit darker as well. And what I use this for, I wear glasses. I know you don't see it because when I talk to you guys, I don't need them. I need it. I need my glasses for um, computer work, looking at distances, looking at this camera. I don't need it. If I had my glasses on now, you'd be really blurry. So this, when I wear my glasses, mid-afternoon touch up, I've had this in my makeup bag at work. I literally get the foundation there and I tap it where my glasses rub off my makeup. That's it. And if I wear a scarf, if I have to, if I haven't got a parking space at work and I have to walk to the station, I wear a scarf and my makeup rubs off on the scarf, on my chin, it's really weird. So I just put this directly on my chin and just pass it with my finger. And then I use, at the moment in my work makeup bag, I've got the hourglass, not dim light, diffuse light in there. It's not a setting powder, but just for the teeniest, tiniest bits that I'm putting on, I use it as a setting powder. It's brilliant. This <laughs> is actually a game changer from that respect because it's a stick foundation. You literally just need to dab on the tiniest little bit and blend it in. Job done. I look like I've got a full fresh face of makeup. Love that. My friend bought me this. And my friends are so thoughtful. You know, people just, and they watch my channel, they know me, again, wearing this today, and I know she's watching, so she'll be like, ah, I know what that is, before I even say it. So my friend bought me this beautiful Avon lipstick in Flash Fam Bay, and it's by Avon, I'm sure I said that. This shade is an absolute dupe and she thought of this because i've shown her all of my we've got for dinner i show her all my goodies this is an absolute dupe in consistency longevity everything for the dior 8 lip glow you know you know i love a dior lip glow and i don't begrudge spending the money on them because i think they are phenomenal the number eight was a is a brick red dior color and it is as you can see it's quite a solid colour for a lip balm, but it has the consistency of a lip balm. It's very strange, but I love it. And she saw this and grabbed it and was like, this is a dupe. And it is. It's a bang on dupe. I have to look up the price and I'll, I'll put it here. I think it's about £8. The Dior one's £30. Yes, £30. So that is a hell of a saving. So if you have an Avon lady, or you know of an Avon lady or man, and you go online, or you go and buy online, this is an absolute dupe for the Dior 8. Thank you. You know who you are. Not gonna show you my nails to do this because my nails are in a terrible shape. You would just have to trust me. I do use Avon, as you guys know. And I saw this for ages and was like, oh, I'm gonna try it. Love it. It's the Restoring Cuticle Cream by Avon Nail Experts. This I put on every night before I go to bed and it is a cream. I will show you. Don't judge me. Don't judge my nails. And I, I literally put a tiny little drop there into my cuticle area on each nail and I just rub it in. And I go to sleep. And then it just keeps your cuticles really nice and hydrated. It's really good for travelling because it's a tube uh it was like six pounds i think this is gonna last me for years like look at it it's massive 15 mil and you obviously use the teeny tiniest amount you can use it throughout the day if you want to but to be honest i always forget i do moisturize my hands throughout the day and the moisturizer that i use i put into i rub into my cuticles but for an actual cuticle treatment i have to do it at night before bed so i highly recommend this i really love it hasn't got a fragrance doesn't smell of anything Again, it's one of those products that you 
you might not need it, I don't know. But if you're looking for a cuticle balm or whatever that isn't greasy, some cuticle balms are really heavy, like you can't use your phone after you use them and stuff like that. This one, I've just rubbed this in now and I can't feel it on my fingers. It's great. Love it, highly recommend. Love, 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 love. Get it, get it, get it. Favorite fragrance. This isn't a cheat because I've only had it about a week, but I've had a smaller size, so this isn't a cheat. I finally, 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 finally bit the bullet and I bought the FM Utique Ruby 100ml Eau de Parfum. It's £82.50, so it's more of a considered purchase for me because, as you know, currently the Royals are £31. Today, this video goes live t tomorrow, so today already all the FM prices have gone up a little bit. I haven't seen the new catalogue, so I'm not sure. So this will have gone up from 82.50. But as we stand right now, it's 82.50. That's what I paid for it. And it is a five out of five match for Penn Halligan's Halfetti. And that is 190 pounds for 100 ml Eau de Parfum. So you're saving a lot. You're saving half, right? It's, I mean, I'll put the notes on the screen. But it is oody, it's spicy, it's sexy. It's a, it's a unisex scent, so men and women wear it. It's just brilliant. And this is because it's a utique, it's more expensive. It's the more expensive oils that go into making the fragrance. But honestly, it lasts all day on me. And I've actually got, at the moment, I've got the shower gel as well. Because my, my mini 15 mil was running out, I thought I'd buy the shower gel to sort of give it some extra longevity until I could bite the bullet and get this. And my last order, I thought, you know what, to hell with it. I'm gonna buy it because the prices are going up anyway. I love it, I know I love it. So it's a good one. I am an FM um, representative business partner. So if you want a fragrance list, message me on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram handle here with your WhatsApp number and I'll WhatsApp you the new catalog, the new price list. But trust me when I tell you, this perfume is one of my absolute favourites. You keep asking me for a video on my FM favourites. I'm going to do one. I'm going to film one, possibly today. So it'll be up very, very, very soon. I'm sorry it's taken me so long, but life. This next one is a QVC favourite. I'm going to insert here or here, probably here, a video of me twiddling this ring around. Again, don't judge the nails. I've literally done this live sitting here. So this ring is by QVC and it is a inspired by <laughs> the Cartier Love Ring with Diamonds, which is about four and a half thousand pounds. This little number from QVC was, I want to say 18 pounds. It's stainless steel, gold plate. The number of people that have asked me if it's the Cartier Honestly, honestly, it's really, really lovely. I don't really wear much gold jewellery. I have a little bit of gold. This is what my mum my mum gave me, her beautiful diamond ring. It's a real diamond. I love it. And when I do wear the gold, I do wear them together. I have a, a Gucci watch that's got a gold face on it. So I do, I do wear a little bit of gold. And now that I've got this and I've got this, I do wear it a bit more than I used to. I do need to get some gold earrings. I've got these that aren't very... Um, gold but you know, I do need to get some more gold studs but anyway this ring honestly if it's still available I will leave the link and the number below of what it is but it, they had earrings and a bracelet and they've now gone so I really really hope they bring this back because this ring is brilliant I bought it I want to say the very beginning of March or maybe even late February I was just happened to be watching QVC one evening between Stu finishing work. I had like 15 minutes to kill and it happened to be a jewellery show. Oops. <laughs> Most of my jewellery is from QVC. If you see any of my beautiful big stone rings, they are all QVC. They're Diamondique ranges to die for. And this, these are Diamondique diamonds. And uh, yeah, I love it. Very heavily inspired by Cartier. I'm here for it. For 18 quid, you can't go wrong. Next up, a couple of gym bits. As you know, I am a gym person. I've always been a gym person. I've always been to the gym two, three times a week. But since I've lost my weight, 
I do take the gym a bit more seriously now. I have upped my game when it comes to weightlifting. I have done a lot more of that than cardio. Before, when I was heavier, I used to do more cardio because I thought cardio made you skinny. It doesn't. Eating well makes you skinny. Cardio does not. Cardio is just good for your heart. It's good for your cardiovascular health. So I do still do cardio, but not for the same reasons that I used to. My body shape has changed dramatically because of weightlifting. And I don't lift ridiculously heavy weights. I don't need to. The only weights I lift, when I actually lift physical weights, I lift a 10 kilogram weight. So nothing too crazy. When I do the machines and the pull downs and the chest exercises and the push downs, I do do a lot heavier. So anyway, um, I bought myself some new gym gloves because my, my other ones, I've had them for, I want to say 10 years. It's kind of gross. I lost one. I have no idea where I lost it. So these are the Gymshark ladies weightlifting gloves. And I have to say, I love them. They're so comfortable. So it, this is a, my size is a medium. So I've got slightly small wrists, but I could have probably got a small, but the thing is, because it's quite gapy, but the thing is the fingers fit perfectly. I've got a little bit of space there, but obviously when you lift weights, you your, your hands swell up because obviously there's blood pumping, you're lifting, you, you do swell up. So by the time I actually take these off, now they're slightly loose. But when I have worked out and go to take them off, they fit perfectly. They're even a bit of a struggle to get off. So these are the Gymshark ladies weightlifting gloves in hot pink. And I didn't really want hot pink. I wanted black, but they were out of stock. And I can't lift weights without gloves because obviously this padding here protects your hands. If you have, if you use don't use gloves in the gym holding actual physical weights. The weights have got a kind of um, a, like bumpy feel to them. So it gives you like calluses and stuff, which I don't want. So I use these for that. And it gives you a really good grip as well. So all in all, I love these. They were 20 pounds plus 3.99 delivery, which I thought was a bit steep, um, but they came via every and they came within a day and a half. So I can't really moan for that. But yeah, 20 quid for a good pair of weightlifting gloves. And I, like I said, my last ones lasted me, I wanna say at least 10 years. So cost per wear, bargain. So again, another one more gym thing. So I noticed, because I lost my weight quite quickly, so if you if you'd not followed my weight loss journey, I've got a playlist, I'll put it here, of my videos and stuff. I can't film in the gym because my gym is really busy. I go really early in the morning and I'm not one of those people that wants to film themselves working out. I will probably at some point, if you want me to go through my workout routine, because it is kind of me every time. But long story short, I lost my weight quite quickly. And my even though I was working out, I was doing my weights, I was doing cardio, my body lost the weight quickly and didn't get its shape back until I started working out after I lost the weight, if that makes sense. So my bum used to be quite big, obviously, because I was bigger. When I lost weight, my bum shrunk, which was great, but it got quite saggy because there was no shape to it. So I took to Pinterest and started watching videos on how to get a perkier bum basically without doing squats, because I'm not sure if I told you guys, but I had issue with one of my knees. And since I've lost weight, the issue has kind of gone, but I don't want to push my luck by doing squats with heavy weights. So I do leg exercises to kind of strengthen my knees, but nothing to put real pressure on them. And the videos that kept coming up over and over again were people using resistance bands on their legs and doing like kickbacks, like donkey kicks. So I'll try, if I can find some, insert some imagery, I'll put it here so you can see what I mean. But basically this is a rubber resistance band and I use the one that is XX heavy. I've, I got a pack of five from Amazon. Again, I'll link them below. And it was like six pounds, such a bargain with free delivery with Prime. And basically they give you resistance. So I put this around my legs. I put it through both of my legs and I sort of hold it I'll put, an, I'll, put, I'll put an image in. I think I have actually saved a, a, a picture of me using it. So I put them just over my knees and then I get on my hands and knees and I kick one of my legs back uh, and up towards the ceiling. So your legs in kind of an L shape. This band <laughs> makes that really hard and it really 
puts the pressure on your bum. So when you're kicking back without a resistance band, you're still getting the right result. But with this, it makes it so much harder, which in turn gets your results quicker. So I do this with the kick up and then I do a side kick that they call a fire hydrant kick. So again, on all fours, one of my legs, I just sort of put up and out. So this is my leg. So I'm doing this with it. With a resistance band, after two sets of 20, you really feel it. I do like five sets of 20, 20 on each leg, five sets. So these have really changed my workout and I've noticed the difference. I did buy these at the end of February, so I've been using them for a month. I really wish I'd have shown a before and after of my butt, but I didn't. I'm not that kind of influencer. I always forget to do stuff. But trust me when I tell you, it's really hard work. It really works for six quid. I was gonna do those exercises anyway. All I have to remember is to take them out of my gym bag when I go into the gym. I can shove them in the machine when I'm doing my cardio, they fold easily, but I've got two sizes in here. I've got the XX heavy and the heavy. So I've got two in there, but I haven't used the other one. I've just used the black one and it's been uh, brilliant. My other recommendation is a book. I got a, a new iPhone recently and with my new iPhone, I contract, I could choose um, lots of freebies and I chose six months free of Audible because I love books, but I just haven't got the time or patience to read anymore. I, life is too busy. It's awful that when I go to bed, I do scroll through my phone, but when I do the cleaning, I listen to podcasts. When I walk to work, I listen to podcasts. In my lunch break, I listen to podcasts when I'm walking around. So an audible audio book to me is just a podcast. So I've been reading, <laughs> listening to a Happy Sexy Millionaire by Stephen Bartlett. Stephen Butler, I only really discovered him like a year or so ago through a girl at work that recommended his books to me. She went to see him live and I started listening to the podcast CEO, uh, Diary of a CEO. And I really like him. He's a great guy. He's very, very knowledgeable, great businessman, all that stuff. He's on Dragon's Den in the UK. And uh, yeah, I really like the book. It's great. It's a not even a self-help book. I don't even know how you would describe it. But basically, it's him trying to explain that all he ever wanted to do was fit in. All he ever wanted to have was the latest thing, the biggest thing, the most expensive thing. And then when he got that thing, it meant nothing. And it's basically just what life means to you, what success means to you, what money means to you. And it's really quite enlightening. So... I'm enjoying that. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm enjoying it. So that is my book recommendation for this month. TV shows. I have two that I have loved this month. The new series of You. If you've not seen You on Netflix, it's brilliant. Serial killer drama. And um, I'm not going to do any spoilers if you haven't seen the new series of You yet. But if you've watched the other series and you haven't seen it yet, what are you doing? It starts one way and ends another way. And I was here for it. It was all filmed in London and Paris, but mostly London. So that was great as a Londoner. I found it really funny. The memes were hysterical because there was one bit in it where, again, it's not a spoiler, but Joe, who's like the serial killer guy, he was like, oh yeah, you know, I don't mind walking through London. And where his university was that he was working at, was in one part of London. His flat was in like South Kensington. The walk would have been about six and a half hours, but obviously in TV world, it was like 15 minutes. I love the fact that South Kensington is one of the most expensive areas in London to live in. Like you have to be a multi-millionaire to even rent a place in South Ken. And this guy would manage to rent an enormous flat in South Kensington on a salary of a uh, lecturer in a college. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> so that was funny. As, as a Londoner, I could get that joke. But um, the series itself was great. It started off, like I say, one way and ended another way. And it was phenomenal. I loved it. Um, hats off to you people because I the last series I was I liked it it took a long time to get there and I was a bit like oh this one gonna be really crap but no it was brilliant I loved it I was here for it I'm dying for the next series one is a program called Jerk now this show is just everything like I uh, 
I don't know how to explain it because my sense of humour is very dark. And when something meets my expectations in a comedy and makes me laugh out loud for all the wrong reasons, I'm here for it. So bear with me when I explain what this programme is about. So the star of the show is a comedian called Tim Renko and he has cerebral palsy. And he is the star of the show. He has, in the programme, he has cerebral palsy. That's the story. He has a carer who is played by the amazing Sharon Rooney from uh, my, bit, my Mad Fat Diary from Two Doors Down. She's a phenomenal comedy actress. And I'm sure you must have seen my big, my Mad Fat Diary, sorry. I loved that programme. She was phenomenal in it. And it was basically struggles of a girl that was overweight um, as a teenager, fancying the most popular guy and trying to fit in. And it was just brilliant. Anyway, so Jerk, she's his carer, but she's crap. So she basically like sends him out to shops to buy her stuff while she plays PlayStation. And he's like, obviously with a, a Zimmer frame and everything. And he is an American comedian in the show that uses his disability to play on the fact that British people are super polite. So he pushes his luck in every way. And honestly, it's brilliant. Please, please, please watch it. It's just so heartwarming, so great, so funny. And we need a programme like this to really make disabled people feel included because they must not feel included a lot of the time and people should always be included and this program just shines a light on the fact that everybody's the same everybody has a sense of humor everybody just wants to get through life and win and be accepted and loved and everything it's phenomenal watch it please it's on bbc iplayer there are three series of it and it's, I think the first two seasons, there's only like four episodes and the last season that literally finished this week on BBC um, had six episodes, half an hour each. Really, really, really funny. Highly recommend. So that's it, guys. That's March favourites. I really hope you enjoyed. As we speak, today is April 1st. It's April. It's spring. You wouldn't think so in this country anyway, because it's still quite miserable and dark and weird. But the weather everywhere I hear is weird. Like I've heard that California has had rain for like 15 weeks or something stupid. Um, so weather is crazy. But yes, hopefully we will be getting the longer, the longer nights are already happening. And I can't wait to throw all of my winter stuff up in the loft. Although winter wardrobe is my favorite. I am looking forward to seeing if A, any of my summer stuff still fits me from last year and B, just to sort of wear lighter things, just to kind of, you know, enjoy the summer, enjoy the warm weather, go to work with sunglasses on, singing with the windows down. It's all good. So guys, I look forward to seeing you for another video next week. Next week, I'm hoping is going to be my FM favourites. I'm probably going to film that next. So... Stay tuned for that one and I will see you in the next video. Have an amazing week. I will see you soon. Bye.